for inviting me. It's a privilege to be one of the speakers here, and thank you. So you have to understand my situation. <laughs> the reason is, I started my education at street school. It's quite for inviting me. It's a privilege to be one of the speakers here, and thank you. So you have to understand my situation. <laughs> the reason is, I started my education at street school. It's quite difficult for me to address a speech in Harvard. So you have to understand my situation. <laughs> my preteens and adolescent years, uh, from late 70s to, to early 90s, was a beginning and end for uh, so many cultural, socio, social, cultural, and political changes happened. So for me, as a kid, I was uh, coming from a very small, lower middle class family. My father was started his life as a police constable, and my mother being a housewife, and we are a family of five. So I was a sick child. I had a bronchitis problem, so I had ample time to contemplate about life's problems. Whenever I used to fall sick, not going to school, I used to be at home, I used to have all the time to think about what's happening around me. So one day, maybe I just finished my street, uh, street school, which means it's literally on the street, uh, in a t small town called Ongol, my father shifted to have been uh, transferred to another small town. So they put me to another school, which is definitely a better school than what I used to study there, where I had studied earlier. So in that school, one day we had a lesson. My teacher was telling about, in uh, the class, the lesson's name is Ma Badi. It means our school. The lesson explains how beautiful our school is and what kind of school it is. And we have such beautiful trees, we have a huge playground, and we have a lot of things to play, we have a beautiful library, we have this kind of books, so it goes on, goes on. And suddenly my teacher turned because I said something to my friend and everyone was giggling. And I said, Kalyan, get up, I said, what were you saying? And I said, I had a doubt and I was sharing with this guy, I said, what is it? I said, uh, our school doesn't have a playground and we don't have books and uh, we don't have any trees. And for me, what the teacher did, she told me to get up, and she gave me the beating of my life. Till now I could never forget that. Because for me, the first time I realized in my life what had been written in the books, what had been said in the uh, in spoken word, and the reality are two different things. So for me, that has become a lifetime obsession to see the gap between what has been said and what has been So for that reason, it has become such an obsession to me, I lost my focus in my education. Constantly I used to see issues everywhere, problems everywhere. So successfully, I failed in my exams. <laughs> True. <laughs> I successfully failed in my exams, so I could not continue my education, so I had to stop. So one day, the reason was, I was so stressed out, and everyone, all my friends were going to for, for universities in America, and they were doing good things, and here I've been uh, failing, uh, I failed in 10th grade, I failed in 11th grade, I failed in 12th grade, I was continue, consistently I was, in, uh, I was failing. I went into some kind of depression. And I wanted to commit suicide. Because for me, it was such a painful situation. Here, I could see pain and problems everywhere. And my focus is not on the education, on the social ills. So I thought of one day, thought of committing suicide. My brother, I think most of you know that my brother is also an actor. <laughs> and uh, he had a licensed pistol. So I thought of uh, taking his pistol, I want to kill myself. 
for the humiliation, for I'm not able to live up what my promise of what my parents had taught of me to become something. That was a pain I had. So luckily someone, I said to my, one of my family members and they hold me somewhere, they counseled me and they somehow, I could not go ahead with that. So, and later I had given up my education and somehow I started uh, doing whatever I could do. Maybe I was experimenting with my life after that. I went into a different kind of uh, education, I, mean, I did my computers and I went into yoga, I did a lot of martial arts and everything. I was continuing like that. For me, as we all know that, every individual is a product of his time and environment. This was my environment I grew up. So finally, what annoyed me or what irritated me was to come into politics after being an actor. For me, to get into acting in the first place, I was not at all interested in acting. I wanted to be a yogi and because for me I was a completely be, I wanted to be away from this materialistic life. I want to, uh, I was deeply in yoga. I was doing a lot of meditations for a few hours and I used to give a lot of nice spiritual lectures to everyone in my family. One day my brother was a, quite a hard worker and he used to work day and night. He used to come home completely tired. Here I said, I, tell, I used to tell him what life is all about, how we should be detached. <laughs> One day he was so irritated with me, and he said, idiot. Yeah, he called me idiot. <laughs> Whatever you say, I agree with you. Can you be the same guy and same person, even after being something, after making, after creating something, after getting into something, make something concrete, and uh, achieving something. Could you be the same thing when I listen to you? I said. And that was an awakening to me. So it took me some time. Now I suddenly, life is right in front of me. I don't know this. I missed my education. I missed everything possible. The only opportunity I had was acting. And you have to understand me, I'm, a, I'm quite shy. And even now if I have to go to shoot, I will never go straight. I always say, go like this, go, go. <laughs> I go from a corner and go, and secretly, like first shot, I always I get into in a discreet manner. Then I feel comfortable. So imagine my plight, few, when, I, when I had started, I was shy, and finally, out of necessity, I have to come out of my own shackles. So what I did, so finally after becoming an actor, so what my whole passion was, all through my childhood, I was studying society. I was studying things around me. At one point of time in my childhood, because before uh, I was consistently, what well, the reasons why I was failing was, I could see a lot of issues, a lot of injustice happening around me. I wanted to uh, get into some kind of extremist outfits like uh, Naxalites and all. My brother was uh, very worried about, about my future. He doesn't know how to control me. He thought if I could buy him a gun, maybe he will uh, confine himself not to go into this kind of extremist outfits, but my problem was not about extremity, not, not about uh, getting into Naxalites or radicals. For me, my problem was how to address these issues. Because for me, I had always seen law, Indian law, any, for any situation, gross injustice ha happens, the law is applied weakly to the strong and strongly to the weak. That's the problem of our country. So for me, somehow I was very upset. And all through my life I struggled because as I said, especially in uh, late 70s and uh, 90s, it was quite a turbulent time, at least uh, for me. The reason was I wanted to embrace an ideology and here we had a capitalism on one side and still communism is, was quite active then and Union of Soviet Socialist Republic is still was still active and for me my father comes from a communist family and he was a hardcore communist my mother is a deeply religious and my father uh, like any other most like uh, any other indian communist my father was also a great devotee of uh, 
uh, Swami Vivekananda and uh, Ramakrishna Paramahamsa. So the contrast of communism and uh, Swami Vivekananda teachings used to be right in, in my home. It used to be quite confusing for me. So I don't know which one to embrace. So I was to wonder what kind of ideology is needed for me to, to go ahead and to learn, to go ahead. That I have these problems. After I had become an actor, and finally I thought I could not do all this, so let me at least in my films, let me project what I have, what I feel about society. So once in a while when I get an opportunity, I used to uh, convey through my films and songs that after, uh, for an extent, but it did not give me enough satisfaction. Always I used to feel short of something, I used to feel irritated with me, and I tried different aspects of filmmaking, but nothing could give me the complete satisfaction. So always there used to be some kind of, I used to fall short. So for me, when I had been noticing so many things like the political situation happening around me, the one particular situation was, what hurts me is the divisiveness of our country. For me, Nani Palkiwala, the eminent uh, liar who passed away, he was, he's a great role model for me. I used to, I keep admiring him a lot. He says, we have Maharashtrians, we have Andhras, we have Tamilians, we have here we have Hindus, we have Muslims, we have every kind of sect except Indians. For me, our society has divided into so many verticals. For me, this divisiveness is to always worry me. And two qualities really made, propelled me to get into politics was, one is the passiveness of our country, passiveness of Indian society and the divisiveness of Indian society. For me, the divisiveness I had seen right from my childhood, I, my father being a, a government employee, he used to go from place to place. For me, always for every two years, I have to get into a new school and a new neighborhood and uh, with a new group of uh, friends. For me, the difference is, you have to get into a new school and suddenly my language used to change because I was in a previously in some other place. So my language, my dialect used to change. So people used to see me like an outsider. I could, the only difference is the Telugu, the same Telugu I'm talking about, it's not even another language, the same Telugu for 100 kilometers, the dialect changes, and people used to see me as an outsider. So they could never embrace me completely. So for that used to uh, confuse me, that used to make me ponder why. In the same way, I had seen the passive attitude once in my childhood when I was in seventh grade, my sister was quite, uh, she's around 16, 17 then, she used to go to a dance school. And my father being a policeman, and my sister, I don't, my sister went for a dance uh, class and some one evening and she came back crying. What exactly happened was a local thug caught hold of her hand, he was dragging her, like he was taking her away. And so many people were just blindly looking at her, no one had moved not even an inch and finally something happened she had to rescue herself and she came back crying and she came back home running for me at that age it was my was filled with rage i want to kill that guy it was mad for me i went mad my anger was it is not about the thug thugs can always be handled the problem was the people around who are passive they don't have the guts to do anything. For me, that has become a thought. Why? Where exactly? What exactly happened to them? Why? How come they can't move? And that has become the understood. People are damn scared in our society because of the corrupt political system and corrupt group of political uh, class. And the, the world, law works only to the influential people and only to the powerful people. So that's the reason. That's what happened to me. That's why our society has become passive. For me, that was the reason I had seen the same attitude was getting multiplied every day and every day. So the reason after some time, being an actor, I realized the way our state has been divided. And for me, it was a very painful situation, not about the state division, the issue, the, the way government handled, the, uh, the parties handled, they took care of the issue, they
kept the issue seven, for 17 years. They kept the issue in, uh, like in cold storage. And one fine day they had woken, woken up and they broke the state in 12 hours. The kind of problems, what, had, what still we are unfolding here in both the states is mindless division in spite of without any thought process. That's what had really irritated me and really annoyed me. The problem is it is governments without any thought they can do anything they want without any thought, without any forethought, without any proper exercising. That has created a lot of problems. For me, the divisiveness is always a problem. Imagine in one country, we speak one language, suddenly same commu Telugu speaking communities has become bitter. There's a lot of hostility between both the, both the regions. That created a deep pain in me because being a lover of my country, being the lover of my nation, being madly in love with my nation, that gave me a deep pain. So for me, that particular day, I don't know what to do. And previously.